it's like a holding chamber of wasted human potential that's just sitting there and nobody's doing anything with it, right? They're just trying to keep those guys from getting killed by other guys or keep them from getting in more trouble, keep them from getting addicted to drugs, kinda. That's it. There's nobody in there going, hey, you know, when you get out, you could be a really productive member of society. You're clearly really smart. You just had a crappy education in the wrong things. Hi, and welcome to the Micro Empires podcast, where we learn how to build small empires for wealth and security, because you don't have to be wealthy to build wealth. I'm Jennifer Grimson. I'm your host. Let's get started. Welcome back, everybody, to part two of my interview with Jordan Harbinger. I hope you enjoyed part one, and thank you so much for all of the feedback, and I really appreciate you guys keeping the feedback coming. I have included in this audio some of the audio that I picked up uh, I was recording before he got on the call about the things that I go through in my head trying to stay calm when I have a guest like Jordan. So I thought I would clip those together and send them so that you know that, of course, I'm nervous like anybody when I'm interviewing somebody who I really admire. So I hope you enjoy part two. Please let me know what you think and stick around at the end. We talk a little bit about another idol of mine, Gavin DeBecker, who I hope will be on the show. If he's listening, I want him to be on my show and I've given his book away. So listen for that because it's part of the lessons that I learned from him. So without further ado, here is part two. I hope Hope you enjoy. I wanted to, and I, I think I didn't know that about podcast one. That's really cool. I just want to name. Yeah, it was really cool. I, I mean, you have these unbelievable guests. So you hit, you restart Jordan Harbinger. And I mean, come out the gate, blow the doors off. I mean, now I think you're 6 million downloads a month. Do I have that Yeah, right? it's like 10 now. Yeah, oh I don't know. Like th- some of those old, it's un- interesting because a lot of people say 6 million and I'm like, where's that figure? It's like in some old Forbes article or yeah. something that's from two years ago. Yeah, <laughs> but, it, but whenever I hear it, I go, how is that not correct anymore? Like that was probably a year and change ago. You Amazing. know, it's not that out of date. Yeah. And it's just, and it just kind of makes me look at my graph and I'm like, how the hell do we do that? You know, it's really cool. It's a cool feeling. And I love your, so I'm just going to name some of my favorites, Malcolm Gladwell, Gavin DeBecker, Kobe Bryant, Ray Dalio, Danny Trejo, Mark Cuban, T.I. Harris. That was interesting. Mm-hmm. Dennis Rodman. <laughs> I mean, they all are. Matthew McConaughey, Amanda Knox, Cheryl Strayed. And I, so I obviously listen all the time and I'm taking notes a lot of the time. And I'm grateful that you usually provide resources. Right. But I was just thinking today as I heard equery, which I did have to look up, by the way. I know. I didn't know that word either. That's Gabriel Mizrahi, my co-host, my producer on Feedback Friday. He's so, you know, his vocabulary is obviously a lot larger than mine. But you are definitely stretching, you know, every brain muscle that I have. So you, and then I met, well, I started listening to you in early 2019. So we met in the summer, podcast movement. A podcast movement, That's right. Yeah. And baby had just been born. Right, and I, right, I went right. to that because I'm a salesperson. I grew up in sales. So I went to podcast movement. I was like, I really think I want to do a podcast. Hmm. Well, there's this big conference. I'll go with my idea, yeah. which is really kind of ballsy slash inappropriate. I'm not sure. But I, I think it's fine. I mean, they have a beginner track, right. but it is like, I never go, I have this idea. Let me go to the world's largest gathering of people who do that thing. I think it's smart, but it, you're right. It is kind of like a, it's like a massive action thing. Right. I, right? I just figured get in the pool and start swimming. Right. But I had been listening to your show. And one thing that I really remember, even though at that point, early 2019, you know, you're, you're killing it, you know, eight months in, you're really blown it out of the water. But in every episode, you're, you're saying to your listeners, please write, please reach out. It really means a lot to me. Mm-hmm. If you see me in public, please say hi. I'm not getting tired yeah. of that. And I just thought I was struck by that. I have, I have employed that with my show, which I've had to relaunch. Similar, much less drama than yours. <laughs> It'll last six months. And it's happening now. People, it's that trust factor you talk about all the time. I can't get over what people write to me, tell me. And it's, yeah, maybe it's because I told my story, but it, it, yeah. would you agree that the trust part is the biggest part? Like, it's the biggest thing. Yeah, for sure. Because people, 
there's what in sales we say like what people need to know like and trust you it's definitely more important to be trusted than liked and I've, I've had this debate with salespeople a lot because they're like no no people need to like you i would much rather do business with somebody that i trust but i didn't necessarily like them because they were a little obnoxious or whatever because i trust them right but i there's plenty of people that i like where i'd be like I will never give you any money because you're a knucklehead, but you are so funny. Right. I would have a drink with you anytime, but having a drink with somebody doesn't pay that person's bills. Right. So yeah, it is a trust thing. And like, I, I, th there's so many people with fake authenticity. It's like that curated fake vulnerability. You see it on Instagram mm -hmm. where somebody is like, Oh, my hair's disheveled today. We're like, we know you spent <laughs> an hour doing your hair and then you flicked your bangs out so that you could say like, I'm not even ready for this. It, we get it. Like we see you. And that gets old, mm -hmm. you know, but going on your show and going like, here's all these mistakes that I made and they were awful. And here's how I recovered from it. And it's possible that this will work for you. Then when people feel that you're speaking something that is not just BS and you're not going, oh man, I did this horrible thing and here's all my mistakes and I will help you get around this for $99 a month. Like then they know you're full of crap again. So if you're just like, here's all these things I did wrong. It's a little embarrassing for me, but I would love to spare you the pain of having to go through it yourself. Yeah. People kind of go, man, respect. Like you're throwing this out there. You're being public with it. Specifically, n that's not helping you. You already went through it. You're doing this literally because you don't want other people to go through the same thing. Right. And that's, there's like respect there that people really appreciate. That's what builds the trust. And so I, I, that's amazing. And it obviously trust is why people like Billy McFarland, you know, ad yeah. admitted to be guilty, you know, small thing on his yeah. interview with you, Fire Festival. And then I think it's really your 40th birthday, you decide to go to prison. We're just gonna oh, right. we'll, yeah. we'll use That's that, right. we'll use that as a snap as if it actually happened. But you have an interest in, I don't know, rehabilitating is not the right word. I spent time in correctional health. So oddly, I've been to prison as well. Yeah. Before your birthday, you had people raise money for this event to go. Tell me, yeah. tell me why that is, because I'm interviewing a couple of gentlemen who spent one seven years, one 13 years in federal oh, prison. Oof. Yeah. And they are, one of them specifically is just, I mean, you know, this, especially at the white collar level, these folks have done their time. They haven't forgotten all of their skills, but nobody will hire them. So it's yeah, about that's so sad. engaging that. So what, what was it for that for you? So for me, I went to, I had gone to a prison before and helped people with like their resumes. And it was, I expected to find a lot of, and you do find guys who like can't read and can't write. And you're like, oh my gosh, you know, this is, you're making a resume for somebody to go work at a landscaping thing. And you're just like, here, here you answer questions this way. But then I saw so many people where I, I was, they would go, yeah, you know, I've never really had a real occupation. I was a drug dealer. I'm an illegal immigrant. I was an illegal immigrant and I was a gangbanger. And I'm like, oh man, this guy's going to be really tough. And they go, so, but I have this business idea. And then they give you a really, really good business idea. And you go, not only is that not a dumb idea, this is a $400 million international franchise that already exists. You're not an idiot for thinking of this. You know, like one guy literally described, he goes, I grew up in a neighborhood and there's a lot of junk. And I know that you can recycle metal and junk. So what I want to do is I want to get trucks, go around neighborhoods like mine, put all the junk in the truck, charge people to take the junk away, but it's a nominal fee just to pay for the labor in the truck. And then I'm going to sell all of the scrap. And, and da -da -da. I was like, this is the business model for 1-800-GOT-JUNK, by the way, which is a $400 million company. Wow. And he was kind of like, Oh, so it's a good idea. And I said, yeah, it's not only a good idea, it's a franchise. When you get out, you can buy a truck, you can paint one 800 get junk on it, and you can buy a license, and you can own the franchise in your area. And it's a really good, lucrative business. Like, it does really, 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 really well. Mm -hmm. And then nobody can tell you they're not going to hire you because you don't have a boss. Right. Right? Like, you're allowed to be a felon and have a franchise. There's no rule against it, and nobody has to know. You don't have to broadcast this. Right, right. So it was like, you know, there's just a lot of people in there that had like really, there was a lot of human potential that was totally wasted. There were kids in there that had been in prison since they were 12 because they shot somebody who came after them with a gun and shot their cousin. Right. So they were in for possession of drugs that were in the car and the weapon and then the murder. And I'm like, 12. Yeah. You didn't have a real opportunity to make an adult decision at that age, right? right? Or 16, mm -hmm. and now they're 32, and they've never been out of prison since that. So I just thought this is such a shame. There's a, 
it's like a whole it's like a holding chamber of wasted human potential that's just sitting there and nobody's doing anything with it right they're just trying to keep those guys from getting killed by other guys or keep them from getting in more trouble keep them from getting addicted to drugs kind of mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. there's nobody in there going Hey, you know, when you get out, you could be a really productive member of society. You're clearly really smart. You just had a crappy education in the wrong things. Right. So that was that sort of spoke to me. And now when I go and work in prisons, which is is not a lot during the pandemic, but when I when I did that program with the Jordan Harbinger show, everyone paid to go to the prison for my birthday. And then we helped out with resumes. We helped out with job interview questions. We helped them tell their stories because when you are interviewing for a job, someone's going to go, huh, a 15 year resume gap and you're 40. What's going on? And you can't go, well, I have made some interesting light. You have to be like, I killed someone. I was in a gang. I'm not that person anymore. Here's the reasons why. Because the second you try and hide it or you deliver it poorly, they're going to be like, hey, thanks for coming in. Bye. Exactly. You have to own it. You have to convince people that you're not that guy anymore, et cetera, et cetera. And so we were training them into doing that. And where the money went from everybody who paid to go was each amount that everybody paid, paid for a prisoner or an inmate in the facility to go through this year long or something educational program oh, that wow. prepared them for jobs resume building interview stuff they get a certificate that says they're working on this so they're it's good for their parole hearing it's good for their job prospects but you know the state doesn't fund that no it's privately it's don't you know you pay you have to pay for it right the prisoners can't afford to pay for no. it so somebody's got to pay for it so i was like i bet you a bunch of people would want to go to prison mm -hmm. and then also sort of pay for a prisoner inmate to go through this program and, th and it worked we sent 72 or something like that inmates through the program this past year just based on what i did for my 40th birthday which is which is great because normally for my birthday i'm like i don't want to hear about how it's my birthday all day it doesn't mean anything i'm just working i'm a year older i'm gonna have a piece of cake with my family the end at a pizza whatever you know now it was like the first year where i was like shouting my birthday from the rooftops because it wasn't for me it was for other people right and i i've now i'm like i just want my birthday to be for other people because then it's a really good day right and you can say can you do this thing for me it's my birthday and you get all these people that are like okay fine i'll show up to your prison yeah. you know it's, like yeah it, it's fun and it makes sense and it makes you feel good and i'm like this is the first time my birthday has felt good in like two decades i'm just gonna keep doing this although this year i was freaking in a basement well because there's a pandemic yeah there's that you know? and just side note this was the reason i chose this date was this was my birthday week so this is my birthday gift so nice. thank you very hey. much happy birthday thank you i want to be respectful of your time and i know sure. i know we're getting we're already well over yeah. what can i do for you what can my listeners do for you how can we help in any way uh, what sure. do you want people to do? Look, I mean, the six minute networking course is free. It's not, you don't, I don't upsell. There's nothing for sale. Six minute networking.com or Jordan harbinger.com slash course. But I, look, if you listen to a podcast, which you obviously are, if you're hearing us right now, check out the Jordan Harbinger show, H A R B I N G E R. Lots of interesting guests there. You mentioned a few of them. I just think people that like to learn might like the show. So anybody who's interested in learning a lot more and learning from some amazing people, whether they're neuroscientists, celebrities, counterfeiters, you know, come amazing. check out the Jordan Harbinger show. That's all I, that's all I can ask for. Thank you. That's, this has been yeah, so thank great. You. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. For sure. Thanks. It's been fun. Some people may think that podcasting is easy, but it's really not. It's all the back-end stuff that someone like me doesn't know anything about that makes it very difficult to have a successful show. So how have I been able to do it? By partnering with Streamline Podcasts. They have made my life so incredibly easy. I get to focus on my great guests and content, and then I deliver the audio to them, and they take it from there. They do all of the editing, all the music, all the show notes, all the socials, and they just get to sit back and and within 48 hours, I have all of my content delivered back to me. The best part is they make it really, really affordable. And believe me, I've looked at a lot of different options. So if you're interested in podcasting and want to use this great product, you can contact Streamline Podcasts and use the code MICROEMPIRES, all capitals, all one word, and you will get a discount. Happy podcasting. Now let's get back to the show. I just want to say one thing. Sure. Yeah, Gavin DeBecker. I read yeah. his book when it first came out. And when did it come out? It's a kind of old book. It's, now, right? it's old, but I'm kind of old. So it was. Um, <laughs> it's like 90s. Yeah, early 90s. And I read his book, and I'm going to somehow give away a book every month. I'm going to give away. You don't have a, do you have a book? 
No, no. Okay. Well, I'll give one away once you write one. Sure. But it changed my life. I was in Egypt and cab driver, long story short, it looked like I was going to be raped. And I, I tell you, it was having read that book that the fear turned into rage Mm-hmm. And that has just stayed with me my whole life. So I just re-listened to his, your interview with him. I just, uh, it's amazing. He's an amazing person. He's amazing. Yeah. I'm probably going to have him back. I bet you he saved a lot of people from stuff like that. Cause you get, you get in those situations and you go, I don't know, everything's probably fine. And you're like, no, I've read the book. This is when this happens. This is already, he's already, we're like at this part of his plan. My options are go ballistic. And then the guy's like, this is too much trouble. I'm just going to let this person. Yeah. I assume at some point he just kicked you out of the car because you're trying to claw his eyes out. This was way too much work. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I've seen it in my life and the other, my niece was here alone the other night. Some guy came to the door. She didn't know. And normally I think it's a female thing to be like, Oh, uh, can I help you? And she just stood at the door with the dogs barking going, what do you want? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which is how you should respond. When a right, stranger yeah. comes to your what door. Was, who was the guy Not the meter made? Hopefully. <sighs> well, I do, I do live in um, an evolving neighborhood in Nashville, but it, he, I think he said he was looking for an Airbnb, but I usually, That's you know, have, probably, I usually, you know, the way I rebuilt was through Airbnbs. And so I have bought in neighborhoods that are turning because it's what I could afford and make money. Sure. Yada, yada. But literally that night there had been search helicopters and police. So it was like everything was coming together, but she's one of those girls that just does not want to hurt your feelings. Doesn't sure. want to do so for her to be like, I, I'm not coming to the door. I'm yeah. I'm not coming to the door. Yeah. <laughs> So if you speak to him, just tell him he has another big fan. Dude, that's hella scary though. That some guy looked, let me in. I'm looking for my Airbnb and you oh. can hear like the sirens. And he's, you know, that's how she heard. Ding, ding, ding. Beep, beep, beep. No, he's doing the code on my door. No. Right? So, Thinking, oh, everyone's code is one, two, three, four. Let me just do one, two, three, four. Yeah. yeah. And like, uh, yeah, she thought it was the UPS guy kind of bleep, you know, uh-huh. and uh-huh. it was, it was this guy, but yeah. Lots, Ooh, that's lots, hella lots, scary. Lots. Yeah. It really is. Well, thanks for having me on. I'll see you uh, with the next podcast movement that we're allowed to go to without yeah, masks on. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I hope or, so. Or breathers. All right. See ya. Thank you. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Bye. Yeah, of course. Likewise. Bye. Well, I hope you all enjoyed my conversation with Jordan Harbinger. And thanks again for listening. So let's jump in to another listener question that I received. This is from John in Manchester, New Hampshire. And I'm from New Hampshire, the Southern New Hampshire, right on the Massachusetts border. So I'm going to do all I can to not read this with my New England accent. But John writes, hi, Jennifer, love your show. Thanks for all the great content you're putting out. I just graduated from college and I'm very fortunate that my parents paid for school and they also gave me a car. Although I'm so grateful, this has left me with a very low credit score. Actually, It's better to say I have no credit. I landed a good job with excellent pay that requires me to travel. I can't get a credit card, and I'm embarrassed to admit this to my boss, but I am expected to pay for my travel up front and then get the money expensed back to me. I can't rent a car with a debit card, and I can't get a hotel room. I've thought about buying a new car, even though I don't need one, because they offer no credit check and low payments, and that's the only thing I can think of to build my credit. Do you have any other way for me to build credit? Thanks so much, John in Manchester. Well, John, thanks so much for writing this into me. This is a, I think, a very common problem. And I dealt with this when I was digging my way out of bankruptcy, really in a very, very similar fashion. It wasn't because I had college paid for, but because I had been in Chapter 13 bankruptcy. So I was unable to get a credit card. And like it or not, in the United States, if you can't establish if you don't have good credit and you can't get a credit card, you are basically stuck living with cash. But even if you have a lot of cash, you cannot rent with a debit card. Believe me, I have tried. I've tried to book my hotel room with cash and that was not uh, allowed to happen. So there are a few things that you can do that are really, really helpful and work very fast. The first is if you can find a family member or a friend probably a family member, who can add you as an additional signer on their credit card. That is going to immediately improve your credit. And this is how this works. That person simply goes into their credit card and adds you as an additional signer. Now, they don't have to give you the credit card. You may never get that credit card and never be able to use it. But what it does is it ties you to their credit score. 
and their credit history. So make sure this is somebody who has a good credit score and has a good credit history. And what happens is that it needs a few cycles. So you're going to need two or three months, but you're immediately tied to a credit history that is much longer than yours and a dollar amount that is much higher than anything that you've had. And your credit score will start to go up. So I've done this with several people where I've made this recommendation and they've seen their score go up as much as 60 points in just two months. So that is the best way to make that happen. And I understand about wanting to buy a car because that you see these advertisements where they say, we're not going to check your credit and low payments. And while that probably would work, getting added as an additional signer is a much better option. I think the other thing to do if you are able to do this, I had to do it, is to go to your boss and explain the situation. And perhaps you will qualify for a corporate credit card. Now, corporate credit cards are something that used to happen in the past. I don't really know that they happen anymore. But If they do allow that, again, the credit card is in the name of the corporation, but you are the one using it. You will be responsible for paying it, but you are tied to the credit of the company. So it will increase your credit score. However, that is a big risk for the institution. So I'm going to tell you a little trick that I did when I was exactly in your position, because what you're saying is you're having to book a hotel, book a car, book your travel, and you're expected to pay for that up front out of pocket. And then the company reimburses you, which is exactly how I lived my life for 20 years in sales. So this is what I would do. I would book my hotel and book my car and book my airline ticket. And the day that I booked them, It might be for travel that's coming up in three weeks. The day that I book them, I submit an expense report that day with those receipts so that, and again, well, I guess the hotel wouldn't come through, right? So you've got a hotel receipt that's outstanding, but certainly an airline, you're going to have to pay for that airfare up front. So I take those receipts, even though my flight might not be for two weeks and submit them so that I can get my expenses paid, get an expense check before the bill comes in. So if I'm doing it on, for example, if you had a secured credit card, which is something you also might think about getting, secured credit cards are literally you give a bank some money and they give you a credit card for that amount. So it's probably going to be something like $500. But this was a way for me to book something, get the cash and pay it off. But the best way to do this really is to be added as an additional signer on a credit card. Short of that, I think just anything you can do, even if it's a rather than buying a car, maybe it's getting a retail card where you're making small payments on something. That is the best way to do it. Also is to just keep monitoring your score through Credit Karma, and it will give you tips and tools of how to improve that score over time. So I hope you found that helpful. Thanks again for being a listener. I really appreciate it and keep the questions coming. Thanks for listening. I really appreciate all of you and your feedback. So please keep it coming. Keep the questions coming and the comments and the reviews. I so appreciate it. Of course, you can reach me at micro-empires.com. And now I've added a tab on the website called Ready to Invest. And that is a place you can go and you can fill out a form. And it simply is a form of where you are in your life right now, what investments you might be interested in, what level you might be interested in. There is no obligation. This is just an opportunity for you to give me your information and I'll add you to a list as I come upon opportunities that I will be raising capital for myself. I will include you and you can take a look at that. And my goal is to have many opportunities, large and small, across a variety of different investments. So please fill that out. Understand there's no obligation, but it just gives me an opportunity to see you and find out more about you. Have a great day. Things you do while you're waiting for Jordan Harbinger. Try not to sweat. Try not to stop Googling anything. Try not to worry about the tornado warning that just came in. Remember to take your Invisalign out so you don't lisp through the whole interview. Try to look calm and relaxed. Try not to think about all the things you may have forgotten. 
Try not to look nervous. Try not to clench your teeth. Stretch out your jaw. Try not to overthink. None of that is working. None of it.